Hey everyone, welcome back to the Tango Banter. I am your host, Yelizaveta. Today is going to be a little bit different because as some of you already know from my previous week's episode, this last weekend I was part of a championship, a SoCal Tango Championship, and after which I had to quickly travel to Texas for some family stuff. And because of that, uh, I will not be airing a new episode today, but instead I'm going to share with you one of the most popular episodes that I've published so far. Episode number 32, when am I going to be a good enough dancer and how do I get there? So I hope you enjoy this replay and I promise I will be back with some fresh banter next week. And those of you who have shared feedback about your experience with the podcast, thank you so much. I am now well aware that there are some uh, consistent audio issues going on, and this is where my focus is going to be targeted uh, in the next few weeks to figure out the best possible way to create a good listening experience for you. So thank you so much for your patience. Thank you so much for your support. And please enjoy this replay of episode number 32. Greetings, friends. Welcome back to another episode of the tango banter. I am Elizaveta, and I am here to encourage and empower you, social dancers around the world, to really reach your potential and get what you want from this dance. I believe social tango is very transformative on many relevant human levels and I am just a friend along the way with or maybe even a cheerleader yeah I like that I'm like your personal cheerleader hoping that you have what you need to continue dancing because that's what I want. I just want to continue dancing as much as possible. I think the older I get, the more I appreciate the fact that as an adult now in my 40s, I can say that several nights a week I'm out dancing. And a lot of people can't say that, you know. It's very special when uh, somebody makes it to tango. And uh, I think, I hope more people have the opportunity to experience it. So I want to ask you a favor. And that is if you've been a dedicated listener of this show, if you like what I'm doing and you want to help spread this work, uh, spread my mission, then there's a few things you could do. And those are, number one, you could tell your friends about this podcast. If you know of social dancers who might benefit from hearing stuff like this, uh, and you think it's it's something that they would enjoy, then I encourage you to to send them uh, this podcast. And then the other thing you could do is you could leave a review of this podcast or rate this podcast on Apple Podcasts. Um, You could also subscribe to the podcast, and that just helps me develop 
the podcast. I, I'm really putting a lot of energy into building it and doing the things that are required to to have a successful podcast. I recently received some sort of uh, a rating uh, service. I, I don't know really what this rating is based on, but it said, your podcast is rated at 241. <laughs> and honestly, I was like, wow, 241? That's pretty good, considering that there are thousands of podcasts. So I don't really know how big the pool was that I'm rated in. But uh, there was a, a small feeling of pride there. I was like, oh, I'm, I, I have a rating. Um, and it's under 300. <laughs> so the more uh, my podcast gets listened to, the more activity it has, the more ratings I have, and it doesn't even have to be a review, just a rating. And it doesn't even have to be five stars, although, of course, the perfectionist in me, ooh, five stars, but I'm sure there's going to be people who will rate it negatively, and that's okay. That's okay. Um, it's okay not to be liked. It's, it's really okay. Uh, so anyway, so those are some things that you could do. Um, and, you know, as, as we go along, of course, um, it always helps me when you share your ideas with me and you share some of your experiences um, because that gives me more clarity about what's needed, what's useful. And uh, I want to be helpful. I want to I wanna really give you something that you can work with. And the more I know, the better I can speak to that. So, all right, today's podcast will be on one of these very um, juicy topics that comes up a lot. It is a, a question that floats ever so lightly in the back of our head when we go dancing or when we go to class or when we are sitting and watching other people. And this question frequently, if formulated into words, would be, when am I going to be good enough? But it's not necessarily that that question needs to sound like that. It's just, it, it's this feeling of wanting to know when and what's required to get to this place where you're good enough. With tango, it is particularly harsh, uh, I think, with the, all of the layers, the, the social layers and the technical layers, and there's so many different types of experiences people can have. It's really daunting for somebody coming in and trying to orient yourself. I mean, I remember being a beginner, and when I started tango, I just literally kind of whoops, randomly fell into it. it. It wasn't something I even sought out. You know, I, I ended up at a milonga and there was, you know, I was there because of a guy. Okay, fine, fine. Confession time. I was there because of a guy. And I liked the guy. The guy liked tango. And so I was there because of him. And I didn't really care for it. And, you know, the first times I tried it, it was so weird because people were like, wow, you're, you're good. Are you, are you a dancer? Do you dance? Like, like it's, as, it's as if something that came naturally to me, but I, I cared nothing for it. I didn't like the music. Uh, you know, it was just, it was so hard to connect with it. So then, you know, eventually the bug bit me and I got it. I, I got the, this, this burning desire to dance it all the time. And once that happened and I tried to think of myself as 
aiming for something, it was so confusing to know where I fit in and what am I supposed to do and what are the levels and how long do the levels take and what is it supposed to be at a certain level and why do those people not dance with me but they dance with others and that person is not as good as me but they're getting the better dances and it's like yeah it kind of drives you crazy and so when you're driven crazy by all of these experiences you will have this question burning in your mind like you know something about what does it take to get to where I want to be do I even qualify I thought you know I've done everything that I need to do or it's the other way it's like you're a beginner and and you're at that place where you're just kind of like it feels crappy now when does it end <laughs> Oh my, yeah, those are deep, uh, deep places to go in. And so this question comes up, when am I going to be good enough? Which, um, that is a real question that I got asked um, in one of my posts. I think it was as a comment uh, on YouTube. Uh, someone commented that they're new uh, to tango and that, you know, there's all these struggles, struggles along the way. And uh you know, they said, when, I gonna, when am I going to feel good enough? And at first, you know, at first I thought, well, never. <laughs> um, but that's not helpful. I mean, I could play the philosophical card and say, oh, it's forever, an ever-evolving journey, and it's not about the destination, and you really should focus on where you are now. <laughs> But, you know, honestly, that's not helpful. That, that wouldn't be helpful to me to hear that. And, um, you know, I think those kinds of sentiments or explaining things in this way, I, I used to live like that. I used to really ascribe to that kind of thinking. But then I just kind of realized that life and tango are messy and, and you need very real things to work with. You know, sometimes a mindset just the thought, you know, is not something that you can really use. You know, it's something that you can tune into when you're at your best. And you can just, you know, the, the nirvana is something of a state of just being in the present moment and not needing to be anywhere. However, I think tango is of a different kind, a different animal, let's say, and you really need something that can um, give you a positive feedback loop, right? So you have to have a reason to stay in it. And there needs to be some sort of process of accomplishment and reward and going to whatever that next level is, you know? So, so I was really thinking for a while about, you know, what, what I could formulate in response to that uh, what could be some actionable um, steps to to take in this scenario if you have those questions so that's what this episode is about and uh, the first thing that you must know that you must absolutely remember that this feeling is universal I have not met one dancer in my experience. Now, granted, I haven't talked with every single dancer I met about this, but honestly, if you can honestly say that you feel completely good enough in your dance, I would want to know that. I actually would invite you to send me a message and tell me, because that's quite an achievement. That's probably the biggest achievement um, of tango is to get to that place where you, you feel totally great about your dance. But for the rest of us mortals, of course, we all have some sort of feeling of not good enough at some point for some reason. So don't feel alone in that. Uh, it's, it's quite common and it lasts. I, it's just part of, part of the experience really. And, and you know what? As a dancer, as a tango dancer, it's pretty special that you open up to experiencing that kind of feeling 
because we don't like to feel that and, and we want to avoid it at, at all cost, right? So a lot of our lives are sort of built on mechanisms that allow us to just feel good enough and we're not challenged in certain ways unless we choose it. And in tango, it's kind of like this feeling that you're confronted with randomly, sometimes more, sometimes less. Uh, and it's, you know, it's a lot, but I think it's very useful. It's a very useful experience. It, um, you know, gives you a backbone. It trains you. It makes you more resilient. Uh, I think it's a, it's a form of emotional resilience that you train when you go through that feeling and you make it to the other side. So anyway, um, the thing that then we need to do once we realize everybody experiences it, just something I realized uh, eventually on my journey is that this feeling, the emotion of it is definitely real, but it's not true. It's not the truth, right? It's not um, a reality that there is such a thing as good enough or not good enough. It's a state of mind. And let me explain a little bit. Um, I just, as I said it, I realize it probably sounds a little weird. Um, but I used to be uh, practice partners with somebody who really believed that you get good at tango by practicing more and more and more. And to him, it was just the purpose of his life. And he even talked about it. He said, I want to be, he would say, people who get really good at tango are the people who get obsessed with it. And so I must, I, I have to get to a point where I'm obsessed, where I do nothing but tango. And I, on the other hand, was noticing that it's much more of an, inner job that sometimes practicing a lot and doing a lot of tango made me feel worse about my dance but then other times I would be at the milonga and I would think that I'm not really dancing that well but then I would get all this great feedback and people would tell me like oh my gosh your dancing is so great and I would get all these compliments and so I was kind of like wait a minute what what does it actually mean to be good enough? Like, I, I I think that I'm I'm at a certain level, but then I get disappointed, and then I think I'm at a certain level, and then you know instead of feeling bad about it, somebody you know tells me something really good. So I I started realizing that it's it's really more of my state of mind, and so I I decided I was going to experiment with this concept a bit. Um, and so to my partner, my counter to him was, well, it's not really about practicing tango all the time physically. It's about practicing feeling good about your tango all the time. <laughs> and, and I had this hunch that if I if I commit myself to practicing feeling good about my dance now, I wonder if something good happens out of it, you know? And when I started experimenting with this, uh, several things happened right away. I began to consistently have a better time at the milonga. And in such a way that it wasn't that I was dancing more or I was dancing with better people. It was just my sense of what I remembered about it or, you know, when I would leave the night, I would just find myself like, wow, just really having a, a good time, you know. And then the next thing that happened was that my my dance really progressed. And I was kind of getting that because certain people who were very difficult to dance with were suddenly not difficult to dance with or something that felt very challenging or obscure or confusing before suddenly made sense. And so I was kind of convinced through my experience that, man, this is, this is really something. This is a, 
This is something I have control over. This is not something that someone else holds the power to give me or not give me. This is something that I can produce myself. And once I realized that, then I really started to mine, you know, mine myself for more opportunities to, to practice this, you know, and, and I'm, I'm still, I'm still really new at it. I'm still practicing it, uh, even though it's been a few years, but I, I invite you to kind of maybe test it out for yourself that for those of you who really feel like there's this feeling like, oh, when am I going to be good enough? When am I going to be like that? You're watching a dancer at the milonga and you're like, when am I going to be like that, like that person? You know, and and when you have that thought, catch it, catch it real quick. You know, you don't have to punish it. You know, there's nothing wrong with it, but catch it and think to yourself, the next person you dance with, I'm going to feel as if I am that person already. Like, like I, sometimes I do that. Um, I, I'm a big, big fan of Chicho. Those of you who know me, I special place in my heart for Chicho. And I love watching his performances. And there's several performances that I've been watching for over a decade now. The very first performances I saw of his, I'm still watching them. Sometimes I'll watch them before going to the Malanga. And I'll just watch him and I'll be like, ah, the way he moves and his musicality. That's what I want to feel tonight. I want to dance like that. I want to, I want to imagine I'm Chicho, you know? And I just kind of take that on as a, as a practice, as an exercise, mental exercise. So you can try that and see what that does for you. Um, So that's, that's something concrete that I think you can, you can take and, uh, an experiment with because it's really about your own, you know, desire, you know, your own desire. What do you want to feel? If you want to be good enough, what do you want to be good enough in? And just take that image and practice imagining being good at it now. And, you know, I just uh, thought this, but I have this quote on my screen uh, in the corner and it says, live your future success now like you expected it all along, right? Live your future success now like you expected it all along by Tammy Havens. I don't know who that is. It's one of those, um, you know how they do quotes on tea bags, like on the little tags? (laughs) Most of them are so bad. I mean, they're just ridiculous. But this one, this one, I, I have it taped. So, you can take that as a dancer and, and test out to see if something like this helps you to have a better experience of the dance and of yourself and whether that helps you to feel better. Now, let's just say that now you've taken on this idea and maybe you realize that you're not limited to any particular um, thing that you can accomplish in tango. The sky is your limit. You can pretty much choose the route you're going to go and do that if if you just trust that you deserve to have it that you are capable that you are um yeah you're entitled to it perhaps even um yeah because tango you know we really all should be enjoying tango a lot a lot more than we are uh i i really do believe that and uh so i was thinking of giving you some ways that you can have this experience of achievement. And, you know, for some of you, you're like, yeah, yeah, the mindset is great. This is fine. But I actually want to feel that I'm making it somewhere, you know, and maybe, maybe you're the person who likes to, you know, train for a championship and you like the, this process of taking on a goal. I'm going to learn choreography. I'm going to compete. And then you build towards that goal. And that gives you that sense of achievement. I, I'm not the, the championship type, the performance type. So to me, that, that didn't work uh, as a goal. 
But I have some other ways, um, other forms of accomplishment that you can focus on that can be more relevant to you. Okay. So our intention here is to stay with this idea that we're going to practice this state of mind, right? We're always going to come back to that. I don't want you to, to get lost and feeling negative and then think that what I'm suggesting is that you make a big plan of fixing yourself. You already are where you need to be. We're just bringing in more of your own flavor to this and using different tools, okay? So let's first begin with defining what good means to you. So if you take this statement, I kind of think I'm not good enough. Take the emotional charge out of it. You know, you think you're not good enough. So what is good? So you define it very clearly. Um, so for you, maybe you have a certain dancer that you aspire to be like, and you feel like dancing like him is the thing that you want. Um, that's something that I did. Uh, for a, a while and, and still part of my sort of inner journey with tango is I have certain people that I watch and I admire and I emulate, try to emulate um, as much as possible. But what else could it be? You know, for some people, it's like, I want to be good enough to go to a milonga. You know, maybe you're someone who's only dancing on a small level. You're dancing at practicas and you're kind of scared and you want to get to that place where you feel good enough to go to the milonga or to, you know, a festival, a marathon. You want to travel abroad by yourself. You want to go to Buenos Aires and you, you want to feel good enough, right? So let's say you define that for yourself. Um, I'll just take it for example for me, you know, for a while um, when I first started leading, I was very scared of asking people that I didn't know. It was very nerve wracking for me. So I made it, you know, a goal that I wanted to be, I wanted to feel good enough that I could be walking in anywhere and feel comfort, comfortable and confident to, to invite any woman that I chose um, to dance with me. So to me, my measure of good enough was do I have the guts to do this or am I going to chicken out, right? And so, so you define that for yourself. Uh, be as concrete as possible. You might write it out. You might talk to someone about it. If you want to send me a message and tell me what it means for you to be good enough, um, you know, it, it, can be, it can be whatever. But make it as concrete as possible because you want it to be something that you actually can observe happen that can happen, um, that there's some sort of like, like, Hey, yeah, I actually did this, you know? So you make it really specific and, um, I'll give you actually just now, I thought a better even example. So in my, you know, desire to, to be good enough, in a certain way, which meant that I was able to ask any woman I wanted to, to dance with me. I made it a special goal to be able to dance with the visiting professional teachers. And I, you know, I know that I have pretty good chance dancing with the, some of the professional leaders who come. I, I, know some of them and have studied with some of them. And, you know, it's, it's not as, um, rare for me to experience that, but to dance with the, the woman, the female dancer, that's uncharted territory. And so to me, it's like, all right, you know, when I can do that, that's going to mean that I am this good or whatever. Okay. So then, once you've made it specific, you want to practice feeling that as much as possible, imagining it, imagining that you're doing it. If you're planning to go to a milonga eventually or you want to dance at a marathon in Greece, you, you imagine it. You go to your local practica, you close your eyes. I mean, you 
if you're leading, then you don't close your eyes, but maybe for a second, you just imagine like, oh, what is it going to feel like when I'm finally there, when I'm doing that? And when it happens, this is the most important piece, because I know that most of you, like myself, will just skim over the fact that it's happening and you already have your next goal. You already are saying, well, Greece, Schmies, I need to be in Australia. You know, like we are so quick to overlook the accomplishment of what we just did because we already have something else. And this happens a lot in like actually learning tango. So those of you who are familiar with the, with the vocabulary, think of a time when you first started and how hard it was to do something like the cross or ochos, you know, like some of the basic fundamental stuff, how difficult it was. I mean, I thought, I thought my brain was going to explode the first time I saw Ocho Cortado being led in front of me. I thought it was the most complicated thing I'd ever seen in my life. Now, I mean, I don't even think about it. You don't even think about it. It's, par it's just part of, your, part of your body. You can't not do it, right? I even say you can always recognize a tango dancer by feel if they do the cross. Like tango dancers will always do the cross. So, you know, it's, um, that's the way tango is, right? It's like we strive to achieve something, and by the time we achieve it, we already are looking to the next thing, and that's how life is. You know, so you want to make it part of your practice to look for the external proof of your work, right? So if you're working towards a goal of beginning to dance at the milonga rather than just your practica, when you go to the milonga, it needs to be special. Like you need to celebrate that. You need to treat yourself. Take yourself out for a cocktail, reward yourself because, man, you did it. You did it. You set up to prove to yourself that you could be this good, and you did. And so, you know, you, you take that and you check that off, and then you can proceed with the next, with the next thing. And really important part of this process at the very end there, when you are experiencing the fruits of your labor, you're going to start getting a lot of compliments for whatever. If you're working on musicality, it's going to be compliments on your musicality. If you're working on your vocabulary, it's going to be compliments of your vocabulary. It just, that's the way it works. Whenever you work on something and you practice feeling good about it, other people are just going to mirror that to you. You know, we're kind of um, very childlike in that way on the dance floor, especially, you know, people are, I think there's a, a certain level of innocence that we have with each other, uh, when we're dancing, because it's kind of like, well, it's not enough time to talk very much, but we're here and we're intimate and we're together. So I frequently notice that when I feel really good about my dance in a certain way, or there's something that I'm doing, um, that I'm excelling at, or I'm thinking in a new way, frequently my partner will say something about that, even though I hadn't said anything. So when you, when you start doing this more inner work and committing yourself to practicing feeling good about your dance and setting some very concrete goals, simple goals, they don't have to be super amazing, um, but there's something that you can really track. That will build your confidence and other people will see it and they will mirror that back to you and they will compliment you on the thing that you've been working. And when that happens, guess what you don't have the permission to do? You don't say, oh, you know, it's all right. Oh, it's not. Yeah, I mean, but I still need to work on this. Yeah, I'm trying. I'm, I'm working on it. No, You're, you do not do that. You do not do that. You say, thank you. 
thank you so much. I've been, I've been working on this. You acknowledge, you take it in and you, you let it just rub all over you like a fluffy cat purring all over. Unless you're allergic to cats, then maybe it's a dog. But you just, you know, revel in it, appreciate it, enjoy it. Uh, it's really important because if you don't, if you don't experience that, then you're saying no to that experience of good enough. You know, we started the episode with this question, when am I going to be good enough? Right. And here you have this experience. Once you achieve a little goal, you have this experience of good enough and you've got to acknowledge it. Um, because otherwise if you don't, it will pass you by. And then you're always chasing after the next thing, right? That carrot that's just dangling, which the carrot is still there. Mind you, this is a never ending journey, you know, tango. That's the fun part about it. You know, you never exhaust it. Even when you think you've, you've finished all of the possibilities and there's nothing else to, to no rock to be uncovered. Um, I guess no, no rock to be turned over. <laughs> you still, yeah, tango is just um, kind of like that. So the last point I want to make was that when you focus on this kind of approach, it really transforms you inside out. And I've noticed a tremendous amount of benefit in my life outside of tango when I've taken these insights and these little exercises and applied them in other areas of my life. This is still something I practice and talk about quite a bit. Um, anytime that I work with students, I remind them the, of these ideas. It takes some time to get used to feeling this, and it takes practice. We're very easily seduced back into that realm of not good enough, not good enough. When am I going to be good enough? Um, and I think that's just the way it is. You know, it's not like it can be on autopilot, just like tango. Tango can't be on autopilot right? You, you have to be present. So this is, this is you dancing tango with yourself, you know, with your, with your inner, your inner self, the, the person that you're with all the time. This is that form of tango. And I find that when I wonder about what does it mean to really be empowered, I talk about this a lot. This is something I think and write about a lot. Uh, so I empowerment of people is sorely needed. We all need to have more of it. And so I wonder what, what does it mean to be empowered? And I, I think who are, who do I consider to be the most powerful people? And that's, of course, a big question, you know, worthy of its own episode. But the way it relates to what we've been talking about is I truly believe that ultimate power lies in our ability to choose our state of mind. If we have volition, if we have choice, if we're able to grasp that moment before we go into a particular negative state of mind or a habit or unconscious negativity. And we can use our will to redirect our mind to something else. That is the ultimate power, really, because, you know, nothing can phase you if you master that you can you can be anywhere whether it's within a tango context or anywhere in the world but let's just keep it a tango you can be anywhere with however many people of whatever level and you can have a great time 
You can choose to. You can see the beauty in whatever experience and you can have fun and be surprised and all of that is available if you have the ability to to choose. So to me, tango is very much of a, a spiritual journey because it provides a very concrete and inescapable <laughs> context in which you have to practice these big concepts in small ways, right? So you can kind of have a microcosm of this. So it's a worthwhile pursuit and I hope you take me up on it and just give it a try for a little while at least. Give it, you know, a couple of weeks. And, you know, if, if these kinds of issues or if you're having difficulty and you just really need to talk this out or something, there's, there's some sort of a conundrum that you're working with. Um, I specifically think of, you know, people who are struggling with tango with so much and you're so frustrated with it and you're kind of like, ugh, I don't even know if I want to continue with tango, which I do want to do an episode on when is it a good reason to quit, huh? I think that's, that'd be a good one. But if you find yourself in this really difficult situation, just know I'm here for you and I do work with people virtually. So if you want to book a session with me, just a talking session where we chat about these things and I can help you through some of the more nuanced, uh, difficult situations that happen in tango quite a bit. So I just want to say that um, there is support there for you if you need it. You can reach out to me at um, on my email, uh, connect at imsotango.com or on my social media. So I will leave you uh, with that. Thank you for joining me today. I hope my contribution to your journey is fruitful and helpful. And I'd love to hear from you. I uh, would love to hear your thoughts and response. And maybe, maybe you have some of your own insights, some of your own strategies that you've developed that you want to share with me. I hope to connect with you again next week at the next Tango Banter. Ciao.